This tutorial describes how to create error bands in Excel. Excel has the built-in capability to create these error bars on every point in a line graph. And this is fine, but if you have too many points, it, be, it can become messy, and it's also hard to look at the actual shape of the uncertainty associated with the line graph. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create error bands. So these are continuous areas of shading that represent the uncertainty of the measurements in the air in the line graph. In this example, there are two tasks, task one represented in gray and task two represented in blue. And I'm plotting subjects accuracy on each task over five weeks of training. So the first thing to do is to format the data. So here I include the average accuracy for task one and two over five weeks of training. I also include the standard error associated with every average. And here I include standard error, but you could also include uh, standard deviation or a confidence interval or any other type of uncertainty measurement. Next, we need to find the value for the upper and lower bound of every error band. So to find the value of an upper bound, we're going to add the average to the standard deviation, or sorry, in this case, the standard error. And to find the lower bound, we're going to subtract the standard error from the average. And repeat that for task two. and then we'll apply the formatting to the rest of the data. Next, we're going to create the graph. So to do that, select all of the data, and under the Charts tab, choose the line icon, and select the marked line graph. Now in the data section, switch the plot so that the weeks are on the x-axis. Next, we can delete the line graph associated with the standard error. And we can also delete the grid lines. So even though it's a little messy, you may be able to see the outline of each error band and the associated average time series. So what we're going to do now is change the chart type for every upper and lower band of the error bands into an area chart. So to do that, click on a bound for an error band, and you can make sure that you're clicking on the correct line by just seeing what data is highlighted. And now right click and choose Change Series Chart Type. Now select the area icon and choose the area plot. And repeat this for the rest of the error bounds. Okay, now we have to fill the area charts associated with the lower bounds with white. So to do that, click on the area associated with the lower bound, and you can see it's highlighted here. Go to the Format tab, and under Fill, change it to white. We're also going to change the line to white, and remove the shadow. And we can repeat that for the lower bound associated with task one. Now we can color the error bands with the color that we associate with every task type. <laughs> so in this case, I'll change the upper band for task one to gray. In this case, I'm going to remove the line and also remove the shadow. And I'll change the error band associated with task two to blue. Again, remove the line and the shadow. Now the last thing I like to do is set the transparency to each 
air band to 50%. And that way, if your air bands cross, you can see the overlap with the transparency. So next, we need to change the legend so that it only reflects the average for task one and two. So first, select on every label that is associated with an error band and just press delete on the keyboard to delete it. Okay, and if you want to change the naming of the task name in the legend, you can click any error on the chart then right click and choose select data and now under the series box select the data whose names you want to change and in the name box type in the new name so in this case I'll say task 1 and I'll name average task 2 just task 2 okay there's the graph now all you need to do is format it to your liking so this is the example that we saw before that's fully formatted and we have the average accuracy for task 1 and 2 over time and the error associated with the accuracies. So here I show you how to create the error bands for two data series but of course the same method applies to just one data series. So in this case there's a plot of some hypothetical brain activity over time. So you could use the same method for EEG data, fMRI data, or really any other time series that has an associated error. If you have any questions, please let me know, and thank you for watching.